Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simon Volta, and I'm the Director of Sales Air V Technologies. I appreciate everyone jumping on uh, this afternoon for our 30 minute uh, session to discuss Starship and QuickBooks integration and how we can help you streamline your LTL workflow. Uh, I'm just going to give everyone here a few more seconds to log in um, and we'll get started. And as we wait for a few others to join, um, just a couple housekeeping uh, tips. I have everyone on mute status. Um, however, uh, if you do need to ask a question, I will leave some time at the end for some questions and answers. So feel free to uh, write your question in the uh, panel uh, next to your name and we can uh, take those at the end of the uh, presentation. Yeah, I have, that's the one thing that I do. But irrelevantly, I mean, regardless. I, I, I think there's somebody on that's not on mute. So hold on one second. For tomorrow? Tomorrow you're. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right, so I think we're going to get started here. Um, so again, my name is Simon Volt. I'm the Director of Sales here. I do have a quick presentation to get through, and I will take everyone through a quick demonstration on how we can help streamline your LTL workflow uh, much better. So we do welcome our Shipgear users today who might be looking at our Starship application, but also any new users or existing Starship users uh, who are used to our parcel workflow and look into maybe add the LTL functionality into your um, process. So for those of you new to V Technologies, we've been around since 1989. Uh, we have about 28 now years plus experience in the shipping uh, industry uh, and strictly focused around our software, our shipping software only. Uh, we have about a 15 plus year relationship with you folks at Intuit at QuickBooks uh, and about 10,000 customers across um, ERP um, applications using our product uh, throughout the U.S. and Canada. Um, I do have uh, UPS and FedEx listed at the bottom because they do offer subsidy programs that I would encourage you to look at uh, if Starship is of interest to help pay for a solution um, that they offer. So again, check with your account representatives from each company and they can give you more information on that program. So for those of you using Shipgear today looking to make a jump over to Starship, um, just a couple uh, comparisons I like to make here, uh, what kind of differences you're going to be expected to see. Um, so you might be used to using your World Ship or Ship Manager program today using uh, different platforms. Starship is really a multi-mode, multi-carrier platform. Today we're going to focus around LPL, um, so, but it also incorporates your parcel um, processing as well. So it's one UI to use for all of your shipping. And then you also will be bringing in your line items from your sales order, your sales invoice from QuickBooks, um, where Shipgear today is just header level information only. We do uh, work with third party applications in the QuickBooks space, such as Activate or Fishbowl, um, as well as other EDI uh, providers, such as True Commerce or SPS Commerce. If you do have any EDI processing you're doing today, that's something else we can assist you with as well. Uh, one advantage you're going to get in Starship is the ability to rate shop and LTL being such a transactional based type of shipping. Um, and if you're using multiple LTL carriers, Starship is a great platform to allow you to rate shop in one screen, all of the different negotiated rates you might have uh, and to pick the least uh, uh, cost uh, provider. And then we also allow for different um, e-commerce extensions. So if you're looking to integrate with different shopping carts, we can definitely do a right back to the shopping cart as well as QuickBooks. In Starship or Shipgear today, we don't have that capability. So, a couple of the reasons to add LTL. So, really, we have the visibility to all of your shipping activity activity from a single application. Um, we allow for the same workflow from parcel as well as LTL. So, the workflow you're about to see in a minute doesn't really differ if you're part, you know, processing a UPS or FedEx package um, than it does if you're processing an LTL pallet. Um, we have about over 20 different LTL options with different integrations with carriers from regional to national carriers. Uh, we have real-time access to your negotiated rates that you've negotiated with each carrier. 
And then a, a few of the carriers as well will retrieve the pro number direct from the API. So eliminate the need to have roll of labels or generating a pro number a different way. Um, Starship can have that capability built in. Uh, and then we also allow electronic tendering and allow for scheduling of pickups with specific carriers as well. And then we also for, um, with the robust uh, ERP integration that we offer, um, we allow for the NMFC code and the freight class to be saved at the line item level. Um, and that's important because you don't have to enter that information repeatedly for each item as you bring those into Starship from QuickBooks. And then we also generate the uh, carrier BOL. Uh, we have our own custom BOL that you can produce as well with custom fields. And then we'll get into a little bit of the reporting and analytics at the end um, to have you know ability to have one platform to view from tracking and reporting uh, regardless of the carrier that's being shipped with. And then basically automating you know your carrier rate shopping in a service selection as well. <clears throat> So what do we have in the pipeline moving ahead? Um, right now, um, we have one uh, 3PL that we incorporated into Starship uh, many years ago called FreightQuote.com. Um, we are about to release in our next version, uh, our next 3PL service with Worldwide Express um, slash Unishippers. So that'll be coming out in our version 18.1. So those of you using Worldwide Express, um, that will be available here very, very shortly. Um, New England Motor Freight, Echo Logistics, and some other 3PLs and regional carriers are in the pipe, pipeline into 2019. So stay tuned for more information as we develop those carriers as we move ahead. This is a list of the different LTL carriers that we do incorporate into Starship today. So as I mentioned, we have about uh, 20 some odd carriers that we work with on a direct basis. If you don't have a carrier that is listed here, um, we do offer a manual bill of lading option to allow for you to process your bill of lading through Starship and to be able to get a tracking number back into QuickBooks. Um, so you have a reference of that, um, but we just don't allow for electronic tendering or rating with that carrier if it's not a direct integration. This is just an example of one of our custom bill of ladings that you can produce in Starship. So you can kind of just see here all the pertinent information from constantly to um, the items that are being shipped to basically the NMFC items in class, as well as costs are all listed here along with the pro number listed at the top, along with the carrier information as well. And then there's my contact. So let me move over to my demo environment here. Okay, so as we look at QuickBooks to start the demo process, um, so I have a simple sales order and with QuickBooks and Starship's integration, we do have different source documents we can use out of QuickBooks. Um, today I'm focused around QuickBooks Enterprise. Uh, we do work with QuickBooks Enterprise or QuickBooks Online on the Starship side. Um, so those are the only two versions that we do support. Uh, but we also support the sales order and sales invoice um, as source documents that we can pull the information in from uh, into Starship. So this specific order here, I have three line items that I'm gonna bring over. Um, from the sales order, um, couple all of this information you see here from the line item, the description, quantity, as well as your ship via I have this one moving XBO logistics. Um, so all of this will be mapped over uh, properly when I bring this order into Starship here in a minute. So as I open up Starship, <clears throat> I basically have a couple different ways of getting my order into um, the platform. If your packing list or pick ticket is uh, barcoded, you could use a wedge type scanner to scan that into the field here. Um, you could use your lookup window to locate your order that you're about to use. Um, so here, if I wanna locate the order I'm about to ship, um, I have this being shipped internationally, so I'll walk you through the international processing as well um, in this specific order. So if I load my document here into Starship from QuickBooks, you'll notice basically all the fields of ship via that you just saw moved in and billing your account as a default. Uh, we do have the ability of, if you're a drop shipper or shipping uh, third party, we do have the capability of bringing and mapping those fields accordingly into QuickBooks. So that way that, that information is automatically brought into Starship for you. Um, we do um, an address validation if this was a domestic order because it's a Canada order, address validation is turned off. Um, in the address validation, we will verify the actual street address along with it being a commercial versus residential location. Um, so that's another benefit of Starship as well there. 
Down at the bottom is all your line items. So this is one um, key component of Starship, especially for LTL and allowing us to help generate those international documents as well as your LTL bill of lading. Um, but here, if I open up all my line items, I have each line item defined to a specific packaging type. That's one option of many that you can do. You can have everything default into one box onto a pallet if you wanted to, or have your items come in loose. It's all completely up to you as a user. Um, but here in this example, I have each item defined to a particular box. Each of these items will basically um, relay all the information from a standard mapping back to QuickBooks. So you can see here your item description, your item number um, is coming in from QuickBooks along with your description, your values and weights are all coming in from QuickBooks, part of the standard implementation that we do. Um, and then your NMFC code, your class is stored at the item level. Um, and that would be stored at the first time you bring the item into Starship. Uh, and then obviously you will also have the ability to back order items as well in case you didn't have those in stock. And you can basically zero this out and so you can ship the other two items if you wanted to. Because this is international, the international um, data screen here will open up for you as well. This item, the Schedule B number is tied to this specific item. And you'll notice it's grayed out because it was stored that way at the item level in the inventory database of our ship. So therefore you have that capability of uh, storing that information in here. So again, you don't have to re-enter this information every time you bring in this item to ship it internationally. On the international tab, basically one thing to point out is the, where we're developing your commercial invoice. So the value for the commercial invoice that you see here will be listed on the commercial invoice when I print it. Um, so all again, the line item information is really, really critical for us to be able to do that. And then you also have capabilities of filing for EEI uh, with ACE's website from here. And you also have the capability of, you know, charging the right uh, duties and tax to the recipient or sender, however you prefer to do that. One of the other key components to Starship is our rate shop functionality. So this is really key in the LTL environment where um, you might have multiple providers that you're using for shipping. Um, and you want to see basically the best rate possible <laughs> based on your negotiated rate versus you having to call or go to different platforms to do that. If I just hit shop all here, this will basically go out and ping each carrier API that I have licensed on my uh, Starship license um, and bring back the negotiated rates for you to see. And here, basically, it's sorted lowest to highest. Um, and you can see here all the different services available to you um, to take advantage of. Um, and in this example here, you can see many, or before I get to XBO, XBO is way down at the bottom here as far as total charges, my negotiated rate. But I can choose any one of these different service levels if I wanted to, say, SDs Express. If I wanted to use them, they're a little cheaper, but it's also returning an estimated time of delivery as well. So you can make your determination based on that. If you wanted to choose a different carrier, it simply is choosing one of these purple or blue buttons. Um, the blue button represents our 3PL freight quote. Um, so same would happen at the Worldwide Express level. You can see what the, their rates are compared to say, your negotiated rate that you might have in place as well. So if you're good with XBO and you want to move on uh, with this uh, processing of the bill of lading and the international documents, it's simply hitting F5 or the icon up top here. And now what will happen is basically your bill of lading will print along with your international documentation. So the first, because it's Canada, we'll receive our certificate of origin. All of the print information on here from Starship is placed. And you basically can print this and send this off to uh, Canadian Customs. Your commercial invoice will print next with all the Schedule B information, the descriptions, the values, this will begin be uh, handled by Canadian Customs as well. And just so you know, for FedEx and UPS, uh, we do support electronic trade documents and UPS paperless invoicing. So you can take advantage of that in Starship as well if you're doing that today. And then you'll have your bill of lading from XBO, which returned the PRO number for us, um, along with the constant information, and then along with all my line item information that you might be seeing today as well, along with the NMFC, and class information here for you. And then this is just an example you just saw before, a, an a example of a straight bill lading, a custom bill lading you could use in place of the carrier BOL if you wanted to, just another option. So once all that prints, we basically, we can go back into QuickBooks and in real time, you basically will see 
the right back of the service used, so XBO Logistics, the pro number, and then we'll also have our total shipping cost here added to the sales order or your sales invoice, whichever document that you're using. So that completes the workflow for LTL with Starship. Um, along with the license with Starship, you do have advantage of taking, uh, or you do have the ability of uh, taking advantage of our um, dashboard view. Our dashboard allows um, for different reporting analytics to be run, uh, ways to track shipments, especially if you're using multiple carriers um, in one platform. It doesn't require any additional user seats like our client does. Um, this can be loaded on as many computers as you like. Uh, but just a couple highlights here from a tracking perspective, it's as simply as coming into tools, find a shipment, and locating by any one of these particular fields. And then when that once that populates, you can basically see, you know, your specific <coughs> information that would basically come into here. And you can basically get an idea of where the status is, the tracking number for that particular example, along with the carrier that was used along with how many boxes and the line items shipped um, and what items were in that box specifically. So all the information you can have from a customer service level are all at your fingertips here. A couple other things, if you did have multiple users um, in processing shipments, you can get an idea from who's being more productive than others. So it can kind of maybe change some things in your operation of how do you, uh, you know, send shipments down the line. Um, so that's another uh, way to take advantage of this tool. And then here, if you want to look at how you're diversifying your shipments by carrier, you can click on any one of these colors to bring up a year-over-year -year comparison um, of how you're doing business, say, with SDs versus what you were doing last year. And last but not least on this, you have access to available a bunch of different reporting options. These are all out-of-the-box reports, anything from address correction to late deliveries to something you can call the shipment charges comparison. So it's going to compare the rate that you're charging your customer to the rate that the carrier is actually charging you, which is a really good report, especially if you're looking to make changes to your shipping policy, or if you're looking to see if there's one particular customer that might be uh, causing, you know, negative uh, margin to be had on a particular um, product or something like that. And one other tool you will receive um, is our e-notify tool. So this allows you to uh, send out uh, proactive notifications when there's a shipment that is on its way. Um, you can batch these at the end of the day. You can send them at the time of shipping, whichever you prefer. Um, but basically, you have um, full access to this um, you know, tool here. So here's just an example of one. Um, you can put your company logo. You can basically list you know, the different um, description of the items that you're shipping. Um, you can basically tell them what service it went out with. This went out UPS. The tracking numbers, the tracking numbers are hyperlinks right to the carrier website. So it's going to try to help avoid those calls coming into you. And if you do have an e-commerce site that you're taking orders on, you can use it as a marketing tool as well for potentially for them to come back and place another order and provide them a discount as well. Again, you have a full template designer here um, to take advantage of um, and change this, make it look and feel how you want, set different templates um, to make it look and feel different for each customer if you wanted to. Uh, but again, we give you full access to that tool. So with that being said, we have um, roughly um, about 20, I think my watch is off here. Um, we have about 10 minutes or so left. So I'm gonna open this up to some questions. Um, so let me just jump over that. I'll leave my contact info up here. So again, if you do have questions um, that you do wanna ask, please just either raise your hand, jot your question in the uh, box next to your name and I'll be more than happy to take any questions here. And at the same time, I'm gonna open up a poll. If you can take a quick minute just to respond to um, this quick poll that I'm about to launch, if you're interested in any of the topics that we sort of spoke about today, um, or want more information about Starship in general, just uh, please feel free and I'll be more than happy to reach out to you after the demo is over um, or by tomorrow at the latest. So let me launch that poll here as well. All right, so let me, uh... <clears throat> so 
So here's a question that just came in. So the question is, can this integrate with our third-party billing and our own account? Yes. So uh, thanks for the question, Nicole. Um, we can integrate. So we, basically with third-party billing, we would have you um, place your third-party accounts in a specific field that you would uh, tell us which field it is in QuickBooks that we can map to. So that way when we pull in the order itself, it would automatically default to third-party billing, uh, either UPS or whatever carrier it might be. And then also if there is no field, um, it would just automatically default to your prepaid account that you currently have. You also have the ability to change it manually if you like it to be that way, but we try to automate it as best as we can. Again, if you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand, ask away. Yes, uh, another question, is there an option to print end of day reports? Yes, you do have that capability um, of producing those for the carriers themselves, um, for FedEx, UPS, post office, um, you do have that capability um, with end of day reports as well. Another question um, coming in, um, is this pricing, uh, is, the, is the pricing for Starship uh, based on a monthly subscription or is it based on our own, I'm sorry, is, is the pricing uh, based on a monthly subscription pricing or is it a perpetual license? Um, it is a perpetual license. Um, there is not a monthly subscription model uh, with Starship at this time. Um, Starship, you own the license outright, and there's an annual maintenance each year that we would uh, bill you at 17% at of your total licensing fees um, each year. Uh, next question, can this work with inbound shipments as well? Unfortunately, not unless if you have Starship set up with your vendors um, and they're basically able to process your shipments on Starship, but typically it's an outbound solution only. Does this work with QuickBooks Manufacturing and Wholesale? Um, it works with the Enterprise or the Online Edition. So I believe that's what you're referring to, uh, Jennifer. So, um, but yeah, it works with the Enterprise or Online Editions only. Uh, will Starship have FedEx one rate system or capability? Uh, yes, good question. So Starship already does have that capability. So if you do have one rate with FedEx, we do support one rate in Starship. I'm going to give it another minute here for some additional questions, and then uh, I'm going to close the poll here in a few seconds. So, again, we have about 60% who voted, so appreciate that. So feel free to vote uh, next few seconds here, and I'll close that down. Um, and I'll wait another minute here for just some additional questions. But All right. I I think we're good. Um, so again, I do appreciate everyone jumping on um, the call today. Oh, actually, we have another question. Is Starship a separate charge from QuickBooks? Yes, so Starship, again, is a perpetual license. Um, so Starship is own licensing software. So you would have an upfront cost with Starship. Um, and then each year, you'd have an annual licensing uh, or annual maintenance fee um, to be paid. So it is a separate cost of, you know, from QuickBooks itself. All right. Well, I appreciate all the questions. Uh, I appreciate those who voted. Um, I will be reaching out to you all to answer any additional questions. Um, a copy of the, this has been recorded, recorded, so you will all get a copy of this as well for future reference. Please feel free to give me a call, email me if you do have any additional questions as well. Uh, and I do appreciate you taking some time this afternoon to jump on, and we will be speaking to you all soon. So have a great rest of your day. And thanks again, and we'll talk to you next time.